Hi YouTubers, welcome to part two regarding split chargers, solar panels and the Toolbot Express. I purchased a solar panel kit for my van and it had one of these controllers and I've been asked questions regarding the controller and how to wire them into the van. Now I'm just going to go over the wiring but before I do that I'd like to talk to you about the unit itself. It's actually advertised as a 10 amp controller. The problem with that is when it arrived with the two solar panels and the wiring it was fused with a seven and a half amp fuse. Now to me if it's a 10 amp controller it should have at least a 10 amp fuse with it and it only had a seven and a half amp fuse. So I queried it with the supplier and the manufacturer and they basically said for, safe, for extra safety reasons we only supply it with a 7.5 amp fuse. To me that sounds a lot of bull because <laughs> looking at the specifications very carefully the 10 amp controllers are really only 5 amp. The 20 amp controllers are only 15 and the 30 amp controllers are only 25. So bear that in mind, but I found with the kit I purchased it works extremely well, despite the fact that it is not a 10 amp controller. But I'd like to go over the wiring, very, very simple. They're one of the easiest things to connect in your van. Apart from physically fitting it, the electrical wiring is very, very simple. But what, what can I say? Word of warning is when you get one of these and you start wiring it in, you've got to connect the leisure battery first to the unit. If you connect the solar panels first and then the battery, you can damage the unit. And the reason for that is, these controllers are for 12 or 24 volt. And it relies on you connecting the battery first for it to automatically recognise the voltage it should be working at. So once you connect your leisure battery, the unit says, ah, it's 12 volt, that's what I should be using. And then you connect your solar panels. And it's very, very simple. And all you do is you connect. All the screw terminals are marked. You connect your battery first, which is generally the middle two screws there. And then part positive and negative, which goes to your leisure battery. The ones on the left are the solar panels. You connect there and you can have two on this one and you connect them in parallel. So in other words, the red wire goes to red and the red wire, the other solar panel goes to red as well. It has two USBs on the front, which I think can do two, 2.1 amps each or total, I can't remember. Very, very simple to wire up. Remember, you need a fuse, you know, near your leisure battery. I would recommend you fit the right fuse and I will stop with a 7.5 amp one if you can or buy the bigger controller and you know fuse accordingly. Now then a lot of people use the, this output here as a positive and negative output for lighting and things like that and my advice is straight away don't use them and the simple reason is most electrical equipment in your van or motorhome has a negative earth so everything connects to negative earth and all the live equipment is switched in the red wire or the positive but for some daft reason, the output here 
it doesn't switch the red wire the positive wire on and off with the button it switches the negative so if you connect it to your equipment in the van you'll find that whatever's connected to these two screws is on all the time because it's switching the negative and everything in your van is already connected to the negative I don't know whether that makes sense now going back to the original drawing I did to do with the alternator the fridge the engine battery and the leisure battery how on earth do you connect the solar panel or solar controller to the leisure battery well very simply you just put the output from the, pro the programmable controller the positive to the battery via a fuse as you would here onto the battery exactly as you would if this wasn't here so you put the out positive of the solar controller to the positive of the ledger battery via a fuse and the negative to there remembering not to use these two terminals on the right okay you say well how does that work don't the two chargers the engine and the solar control system um, compete one another well, very very simply think of a seesaw on one end you've got the engine charging circuit and on the right hand side you've got the solar panel charger whichever is given the stronger you know if the engine is, is more powerful and it's charging the battery the seesaw will tip and it will charge the laser battery and the solar charger will reduce its charge because it don't need to and vice versa so whichever is giving the stronger output will put charge into the battery and they work with one another not against one another it's very very simple so if the solar is very giving a really good output compared to the engine running the seesaw will tip that way and it will charge the laser battery vice versa if there's not much sun out the engine is giving more power out for charging it will tip the other way if the engine is not running the solar will work it if the engine is giving a vast amount out and vice versa it just swings backwards and forwards electronically it goes to its own level you don't have to worry about extra wiring split chargers or anything like that the only thing you do need to do is if you want to charge the engine battery from your solar panel that's when it comes a bit more complicated and I'll go through that in a short while but my battery on my camera is dying at the moment so I'll have to switch it off and do a recharge on that okay got me battery charged from my camera so we'll talk about carrying on with the solar panel controller me. I talked about this sort of seesaw effect where if your engine's running and you've got your solar panel charging at the same time um, it will basically balance itself out so you needn't worry about it it doesn't need any extra complicated circuitry whichever is the strongest voltage coming in from either the engine or the solar panel will override the other one so it doesn't do any damage even if they're all trickling into the battery it won't matter and um, with your um, electric hookup it's a similar thing you know it's very rare to have the engine running with electric hookup but don't worry about the electric hookup because that charging circuit for the leisure battery um, it will also balance itself out so you don't worry about that now what I've done um, this is a drawing oh yes the wires coming from the solar panel you get a red and a black normally the red one goes to the solar controller so should the black one you should not ground the black wire coming from your solar panels it should go straight to the controller 
it should not go to the chassis or ground. So it should only, the two wires from the panel, go to the controller. Now what I've done now is, <coughs> back to my original drawing, I've drawn in the solar panels here and the controller for the panels and the leisure battery. Remembering that the wires from the controller go to the battery. Positive to positive, black to black or chassis. So I've drawn it in the circuit. So you can see that the drawing is going to be a little bit more complicated. But um, what you will notice is there's no way for the solar panel to charge the engine battery. There's no route back in the circuitry. Now, on modern camper vans and motorhomes, the, when the engine's running, it obviously charges the engine battery and the leisure battery. And also, when you're in electric hookup, it charges the engine battery and the leisure battery in the modern motorhomes or RVs or whatever you like to call it. But in older vehicles the electric hookup only charges the leisure battery. It does not charge the engine battery unless it's been modified because there's no route from the leisure battery to the engine battery. I hope that's clear. And similar with the solar panel, there's no route to the engine battery. So what I've done, I've designed a small circuit which allows the solar panel to trickle charge the engine battery. And I'm going to stop the camera again while I draw, draw the circuit I've come up with. Now this is a device I've come up with myself. They're not available on the market that I'm aware of. And it's a way of trickle charging your engine battery from your solar panel. <coughs> or if you've got electric hookup it will trickle charge your engine battery as well. Now rather than add it into the main drawing I've done it separate. So your leisure battery goes to chassis with a negative wire so does your engine battery go to chassis so there that's your electrical connection through your body of the vehicle. Now as I said before there's no way or for this bat the engine battery to be charged from any of the circuitry associated with the leisure battery on older vans. Now then, <clears throat> what I've done, I've now created a link or a wire that goes from the leisure battery through my homemade box through a switch to the engine battery. Now what happens is, when the leisure battery voltage is high, this is called a diode. What it does, it only conducts electricity in one direction. So with the switch closed, anything that's charging the leisure battery will put a trickle charge into the engine battery. Now this box inside it has got the diode which only allows voltage to flow that way. So it goes through the charge or voltage here, goes through the diode, it then comes up against a, what's called a resistor bank and that resist, um, resists the flow of current. So this will actually limit to a maximum of 10 amp going from the leisure battery circuitry to the engine battery. Now I've got a switch on mine 
so I can switch this circuit out and if it's in circuit all the time if for example you parked up and you're not charging your leisure battery you're completely off solar panels there's no no extra charge going in here and you leave your lights on it will flatten the engine battery and it will also flatten the leisure battery if you left it on by mistake your lights so what I use this for is <coughs> when my motorhome is in outside storage I want it to trickle charge the solar panels to trickle charge both batteries so as soon as I park up on a gravel storage area and it might be there two months I make sure my lights are off and everything is off I operate this switch so this circuit is then switched in I then know that providing there's some sunlight the solar panels will charge the leisure battery and any surplus energy will flow to the engine battery so it keeps them topped up and it works extremely well <clears throat> but the reason why I've got a current limiter in here is one I don't want it to take all the power from the solar panel I want to limit how much it can take so that if for example I've left this switch closed and I start the engine it can draw like I don't know 80 to 100 amps from the engine battery I don't want it to try and draw that amount of current from the leisure battery so this circuit during engine starting will only allow 10 amps of the leisure battery to flow the advantage of this you, this circuitry is this is if it's really really cold weather there's no sunlight and the engine battery is slightly down I can operate that switch leave it for a few seconds and any surplus in here will go to the engine battery to help it, the engine start it works extremely well <clears throat> now the reason why it's got this diode in and only allows the current to flow one way you don't want all the power from the alt alternator when the engine's running going into the engine battery and the leisure battery it stops the flow that way so there's no f power flow from the engine battery to the leisure battery through this circuit one is when the switch is open and two this diode prevents it it's like a one-way street the power can only go from the leisure battery to the engine battery through this circuit with that switch closed it can't go the other way and it's a very very simple circuit to build if you're into electrical stuff if not don't worry about it but modern motorhomes have all this circuitry built into their main battery controllers but this I'm talking about is on older vans where everything's a bit crude and more mechanical but it works extremely well um, I will just mention in my van I've got quite a few different bits I've added um, there's actually we don't use a television in our van, we don't use a radio in our van and the electrics in the van is very basic. We have lighting, the water pump, extractor fan for the cooker on 12 volt and charging USB and things like that. So there's nothing else. A lot of modern vans have got TVs in them, they've got radios in them and when you park up for a long period of time and not use a van things like the, the car radio that's in there will actually run the battery down because it takes a small amount of power to retain the memory in the radio the same with televisions these days when they're actually powered off they're in a standby mode and they're still taking power well in my van I don't have a television I don't have a radio um, we do have a um, 
a satellite tracking system on the van if it gets stolen installed, a tracker. That does take power, but it takes so very little power the solar panels can obviously keep topping it up, so it's not a big issue. So really that's it with the electrics. Um, I don't have a lot of experience in modern vans because I've never owned one. But if you've got any questions, um, you, my email is on the end of the video. Um, now Frank is another YouTuber who asked me specific questions. Um, what I'll do, I'll send you my telephone number directly. And um, if you want to give me a call, if you've got any specific queries on your van, or if you're fairly local, um, I'm quite happy to look at look at your electrics. I'm not um, I'm not a business. I'm retired, but I'm always willing to help people out, you know, for a couple of beers sort of thing. So thanks for watching this video. I hope it all makes sense. If not, I'll <laughs> try and do another video that might explain it a bit better. But as I say, this is my own circuit that I sort of come up with to overcome problems in my van. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like.